I see what you mean when you say, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. Exactly. Hang on a second. Hello? <laughs> what? No, did they? I'm so sorry. I'll call you later, honey. Who is that? My friend. What's his name? Alexander T. Wolf. He sounds cute. What's he look like? He's big and furry and has a really long nose and <laughs> a chronic kind of case of the sniffles. Isn't he a bad guy? I've heard he's pretty terrible. That's what everyone says, but thanks to my friends Jesse Orcutt and Alex Clarier, who adapted and directed the true story of The Three Little Pigs by John Sieska, you'll know the truth. All right then. Ladies and gentlemen, the true story of The Three Little Pigs. Everybody knows the story of three little pigs, or at least they think they do. I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody's ever heard my side of the story. Name? <laughs> Mrs. Officer, I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me out. Now, I'm not sure this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. And plus, ever since I've gotten locked up, I've had these two bickering voices in my head. Voices? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what makes you so sure? Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not their fault. We'll see cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and squirrels. And pigs. It's just the way they are. You know what? If cheeseburgers are cute, folks probably think you were big and bad too. <laughs> like I was saying, this whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. Can we stick to the story, please? This is the real story. About a cold and a cup of sugar. Way back in Once Upon a Time Time, a wolf was making a birthday cake for his dear, sweet old granny. I had a terrible season cold. He ran out of sugar. So, I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig. And not a very bright pig if you ask me. He built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind built a house of straw? So, of course, the moment I knocked on the door, it fell right in. Well, he didn't want to just walk into somebody else's house. So I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. He was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for a dear, sweet old granny's birthday cake. <laughs> That's when my nose started to hitch. I thought a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. I told him to hold it in. And I told you to shut up. I found! The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig. Dead as a door now. Poor little pig can't been home the whole time. Seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner. <laughs> so I ate it up. And there was a big cheeseburger just lying there. He was feeling a little better. But I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So he went to the next neighbor's house, the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He built his house of sticks. I rang the bell. I rang the bell. Nobody answered. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He probably should have left just then. <laughs> Go away, Wolf! You can't come in! But I just need... <laughs> what was that? I couldn't hear you. I'm shaving the hair from my chinny chin chin. <laughs> I just the door knob, but I felt another sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. Officer, I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're not going to believe this, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was a second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's eye. <laughs> now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. <laughs> so, he did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. <laughs> it was getting awfully full. But his cold was feeling just a little better. 
and I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear, sweet, old granny's birthday cake. So, I went to the next house. Now, this neighbor was the first and second little pig's brother. It must have been the brains in the family since he built his house in brick. I knocked in the brick house. No answer. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And you know what that rude little porker answered? <laughs> hey, get out of here, Wolf! Don't bother me again! <laughs> he probably had a whole sack full of sugar. And he wouldn't even give him one little cup for dear, sweet old granny's birthday cake. What's up, pig? <laughs> hey, yo, I heard that! <laughs> he was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card. Instead of a cake, when he felt his cold coming on, again! I huffed and I snuffed, and I sneezed a great sneeze. Then the third little pig yelled, And your old granny can sit on a rusty pin! <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow. When somebody talks about my granny like that, I'm a little crazy! A little! It's not that bad. snuffing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> now listen here, people. Somehow it was the reporters who found out about my two brothers and Wolf after lunch. The reporters must have realized that a story about a sick wolf going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very interesting. So the reporters must have jazzed it up with that pop and pop and blow your house down business. And they mean me, big, bad, crazy wolf. <laughs> he was framed. But maybe you will let me come to sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Suicide. Yes, but with the help of an angel, he finds he really has a wonderful life. Up next, Christine Lombardo and Riley George have adapted a scene from this timeless classic. Enjoy. Hello, Joseph. Trouble? Yes, God. Looks like we're <laughs> going to send someone down. A lot of people ask me for help for a man named George Bailey. George Bailey. Yes. Tonight's his crucial night. You're right. We'll have to send someone down immediately. Whose turn is it? Well, that's why I came to see you, sir. You see it's that clockmaker's turn again. Ah, Clarence. Hasn't got his wings yet, has he? Well, we've passed him up right long because, as you know, sir, he's got the IQ of a rabbit. Yes, but <laughs> he's got the faith of a child. Simple. Joseph, send for Clarence. Yes, you sent for me, sir. <laughs> yes, Clarence. A man down on earth needs our help. Oh, splendid. Is he sick? No. Worse. He's discouraged. At exactly 10.45 p.m., Earth time, that man will be thinking seriously of throwing away God's greatest gift. Oh, dear, 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 his wife. Then I only have minutes to trace. What are they wearing now? You'll spend that time getting acquainted with George Bailey. Poor George. Sit down. Hey, sit down? What do we imagine? You're going to help him. <laughs> you want to know something about him, don't you? Well, naturally, of course, I'm going and to. pay attention. You gonna see something? Uh, no, I can't see anything. 
Oh, I forgot. You haven't gotten your wings yet. Now look, I'll help you. Concentrate. Begin to see the town? Oh, why yes! This is wonderful! If you ever get your wings, you'll see all by yourself. Oh, fantastic! Oh God, dear Father in heaven, I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and you can hear me, show me the way. I'm at the end of my rope. Show me the way, God. I've always tried to be a good man, always put others before myself. I, I guess I've let everyone down. Potter got exactly what he wanted. Spent my whole life in this godforsaken town. This is the end of my rope. Ah! Help! 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 <laughs> How did you? Help! <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, wait. Much better now that you're still here. Well, come on, we're gonna get sick out here in the snow. I'll make a fire in the watch room. Well, now that that's over with, let's get these clothes off. I'm sorry to say I don't have any more modern underwear. You'll have to forgive that. My wife gave me these on my last birthday. Passed away in them. <laughs> How did you happen to fall in? Oh, I didn't fall in. I jumped in to save you, George. You, you what? T to save me? Well, I did, didn't I? You didn't go through with it, did you? Suicide. Well, you see, George, it's against the law to commit suicide around here, and it's against the law where I come from, too. Where do you come from? Heaven! <laughs> now, you see, George, I knew if I were drowning, you'd try to save me. And you see, you did. And that's how I saved you. You see, George, I'm the answer to your prayer. That's why I was sent down here. Who are you, then? Clarence Oddbody. A.S. A.S.? Angel. Second class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. I want a martini put in those drinks. <laughs> Would you say, why do you want to save me? That's what I was sent down for, George. I'm your guardian angel. It was ridiculous of you to think of killing yourself anyway. Eight thousand dollars, yeah, I'll say. Just things like that. How did you know that? I told you. I'm your guardian angel. I know everything about you. Sort of a fallen angel, aren't you? Well, what happened to your wings, eh? I haven't won my wings yet. I've got to earn them. And you know what? You'll help me with that now, won't you? Oh. Sure, sure. How? By letting me help you. <laughs> I found it out a little later. I'm worth more dead than alive. Oh, no, 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 George. You can't talk like that. I'll never get my wings with that attitude. Ah, shut up, will you? I suppose you're right. I suppose it'd be better off if, if I'd never been born at all. Now, what did you say? I said I wish I'd... Never been born. No, 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 you mustn't talk like that, you... Oh! <laughs> that's an idea, that's an idea. Hey, wh what do you think? Oh, splendid, splendid. All right, you've got your wish. You've never been born. What did you say? You've never been born. You don't exist. You haven't a care in the world. No worries, no obligations. No potter looking for you with the sheriff. No $8,000 to collect. Just say something else in that ear. Oh, sure. You can hear out of it now. Well, that's the doggonest thing. I haven't heard of that ear since I was a kid. Oh, must have been that cool jump in the water. Uh, I need a couple of good stiff drinks. How about you, Angel? You want a drink? Uh, get your clothes on. We'll stroll down to the bar. Oh, I I'm sorry. I'll stroll and you fly. I can't fly here, George. I haven't got my wings. You haven't got your wings. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Why does the sign say Pottersville and not Bedford Falls? Is this some kind of joke? No, 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 George. You see, you don't understand. Without you here keeping control of the Bailey loan business, Potter took over town. Look, who are you? I told you. I'm your guardian angel. But what are you? Are you a hypnotist? No, of course not. But why am I seeing all these strange things? It's because you were not born, George. And if I wasn't born, who am I? You're nobody. You have no identity. Ah, uh, what do you mean, no identity? My name's George Bailey. There is no George Bailey. Listen, you have no papers, no cards, no driver's license, no insurance forms. They're not there either, George. Now listen, you've been given a great opportunity here. 
a chance to see what the world would be like without you. Oh, this, this is some kind of funny dream I'm having. So long, mister. I, I'm going home. Home? What home? Now shut up! Cut it out! You think you're crazy! That's what I think. You're screwing. You. You're driving me crazy too. I'm going home to my wife and kids. You understand that? I'm going home alone. How am I doing, Joseph? Thank you. <laughs> Taxi? Taxi! Hey, wait! It's Ernie! Ernie! And Bert! <laughs> now, Bert, uh, I need you to take me home. I I've gone off my nut. All right. Where do you live? The 320 Sycamore. Now, hurry up. 320 Sycamore? That's right. The, the house up there? That house hasn't been lived in in over 20 years. <laughs> what happened to it? Are you all right? All right, uh, take, take me to my mother's house. Oh, 123 Doll Kennel Lane. Now hurry up. <laughs> now, Bert, I need you to straighten me out. I've got some bad liquor or something. Now, you are Ernie Bishop, and you live in Bailey Park with your wife and kids. That's right, isn't it? You've seen my wife? <laughs> seen your wife? I've been to your house a hundred times. Look, bud, what's the big idea? I live in a shack in Pottersfield. My wife ran away three years ago and took the kid. I had never seen you before in my life. Okay. Okay, just take me to my mother's house. Is this the place? Of course it's the place. Eh, yeah, good riddance. That guy was bats. Let's get out of here. Well? Mother. Mother? What do you want? Mother, this is... this is George. I thought for sure you'd remember me. George who? If you're looking for room, there's no vacancy. Oh, Mother, please. Please, let me come in. Something terrible's happened to me. Something terrible's happened to everybody. Please, keep me here until I get over it. Get over what? I don't take in strangers unless they're sent here by somebody I know. Look, I know everyone you know. Your brother-in-law, Uncle Billy. You know him? Sure I know him. When did you see him last? Today, over at his house. That's a lie! He's been in the state asylum ever since he lost his business, and if you ask me, that's where you belong. Now, good night. Strange, isn't it? <laughs> Each man's life touches so many other lives, and when he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole. Doesn't he, John? <laughs> Clarence, take me to my brother Harry's house. He lives right here in Bailey Park, but where are the houses? You and your brother Harry weren't here to build them, George. Harry fell through the ice and was drowned at the age of nine. <laughs> That's a lie! Harry Bailey went to war. He won the Congressional Medal of Honor. He saved the lives of every man on that transport. Every man on that transport died, George. Harry wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save Harry. You see, George, you really had a wonderful life. Don't you see what a mistake it would be to throw it away? Please, please, Clarence, please, get me up, get me back to my family. I don't care what happens to me. Get me back, please, Clarence, please. <laughs> I want to live again. I want to live again. I want to live again. Oh, please, God, let me live again. Hey, George! George! You all right? Your family's been looking for you. 